So now we're going to do an experiment to see if there is an effect of cut location on rooting success. And I've kind of already started this, and I had a little video put together for it already, but I do work in a location that's very public and very downtown. And so there was a helicopter going over for a while, so we're just going to restart. Um, typically, a node is a site of um, cells without jobs yet, and so one of the jobs that you could give them would be to root. And uh, those are concentrated in the axillary meristem tissues at each node. Uh, if you are in the inner node, there's not really a lot of that machinery, but sometimes there is a little bit, depending on what type of species you have. So in this experiment, we are going to see if it matters whether you cut at a node or below a node. With, with this side here, this is all inner node, so I'm making sure there's no node on the bottom. And then I'm just going to go ahead and dip that into Rutone, which is um, an IBA-based rooting hormone. And so this side I have set up, we're going to do 20 of each. This side is all going to be with just an inner node. And the other side will have a node. We've labeled them as such. So this one says inner node, that one says node. And today, the day that I'm propagating these things is April 9th. So here we've got a lot of tip tissue, but um, we're going to take off those apical tips because we want the plant to grow down and grow roots, not grow out from its tips. So here's one where we've got this lovely node here. There's some protrusions. Nodes are going to be found in the axles of the leaves. And so um, this one has a really nice node at the bottom of it there. And so we're going to dip that into rooting hormone and put that on the node side. Then, then you're left with kind of this inner node hanging out there. Now we say, ladies, don't leave your inner nodes hanging out. Gents, don't leave your inner nodes hanging out either. So here we go. We're just going to pick these off. Also, the ladies and the gentle thems, don't leave your inner nodes hanging out. Okay, so now we're just going to keep doing that where we have the node. We're going to dip it in a little rooting hormone. We're going to put it there. And we're just going to see out of this experiment if you actually need a node at the bottom or not. Some of you who are a little bit more experienced in propagation or in plant physiology in general or plant development probably have a, a good hypothesis for this. Like you might be thinking one way or the other if this is going to produce roots or not, and we'll just have to figure out if your hypothesis is correct. So at the end of the quarter, we will um, run some statistical analyses on this and determine if it mattered that we had a node on the bottom or not. Well, you know what, that looked like it had a little tiny bit of node tissue on it, I'm gonna trim it, just to make sure that I have no node on the bottom. You get a lot more material if you don't have to have a node on the bottom because you're not wasting all of this piece. So, you know, it would be advantageous if we don't need to have a node at the bottom. But we might not have any of those cells or not many of those cells that would like to root from the bottom. We'll find out. Maybe it'll develop some cells and it will root there. I guess we will see. So this side is all done now with my inner node. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do my node. When you're doing a node at the bottom, you want to make sure that you pick off these leaves on the sides because we don't want those to rot since they're going to be in close proximity with the soil. And take another, clip that inner node out. Clip off this bottom piece, pinch off our leaf tissue. This is a pretty succulent plant in general. Um, we are propagating goldfish plant. This plant is, it likes to grow in low light situations, so it makes a pretty good house plant. I grew it in an extremely low light situation so that I could get it to be nice and leggy and have these really long inner nodes so that we could um, have them well spaced out for this experiment. And this plant kind of needed a haircut anyways. It was kind of growing a little a little extra leggier than what I would have liked. Okay, so on this side we're going to take off that apical tip. We don't want the very fresh green growth because we want it to grow down and not um, up. And then just keep trimming and dipping and sticking. And I think you guys get the point. So I'm just going to carry on with doing this. Um, and 
I will give you guys some observations in a couple of weeks. Basically, we're going to kind of just leave these alone for a while. I'm going to put them with a little bit of bottom heat and a little bit of mist in my greenhouse so that they will um, stay in a humid and moist environment and uh, not be subjected to anything that's too cold. And so we'll probably just check these at the end of the quarter just one time because it does take about six weeks to be able to see results on this plant. Maybe a little bit less. We'll see if we get lucky. Uh, but whenever we do test these, we're just going to give them a wiggle. And if they have a little resistance, then we're going to see if they have roots. And if they don't have any resistance, then they probably do not have roots. We may also see some discoloration that occurs in the leaves. They may drop their leaves. I'm not exactly sure, but those are the types of observations that you might be able to expect in the future. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. And uh, be sure to check out um, if we have observations, too. Thank you.